Let's go over the example. I'm going to go through this pretty quickly, and you can slow the video down when you need to. But we'll start with a new strategy from code. And I've got the setup about the same way you had it on your on your um, video. Let's hit Control A to select everything, and then delete it, and then paste the code that I had already copied from the website. Whenever you make a change in the editor, of course, compile, and look for this compiled successfully message to make sure everything got uh, translated or copied correctly. OK. Um, you had all data selected here. This is the data range that you're loading into the chart, okay? And when you select, uh, run this on a symbol by just by hitting, uh, by clicking the symbol, hitting go, or hitting F5, you'll see that uh, we're running the back test on the entire history of, of SPY. Um, the trades, these are the, this is the trades tab. This is one of the performance visualizers that, that are selected. You can select these visualizers by going to Preferences, F12, and these are the visualizers that um, that are selected. I have I might have a lot more than, than, than what you see in your installation, but that's part of the extensions um, feature that we have in Wealth Lab. So the trades shows you the trades that you have in the back test. And notice one another thing here quickly is that the quantity of the trades is how much you're buying. Okay. Well, we bought 355 contracts. Why do we buy so many contracts? Well, because the price was um, 31 cents, and we're looking to buy uh, $10,000 worth of an option contract, 31 cents, actually $31, multiplied by 100, so that gives us 355. So probably what the idea is that you probably only want to, want to trade one contract. So let's go to this raw profit mode and select one. Hit OK, and now we'll rerun the back test, and you can see that the quantity of the option that we, we're buying one option every time that, that we get a signal. OK, <laughs> let's go back to the chart. And uh, remember, we ran this on all data back to 1993. So this is why we're creating an, uh, a pain for every option contract that we've traded back to 1993. And that's why it's getting all squished. There's too many contracts. So to visualize this a little better, let's go back just one year, hit OK. And now we can see that in the last year, we've only traded four contracts. Um, you can see the chart, the price chart, which is uh, looks a lot more like what you saw in Thinkorswim, your swing Thinkorswim chart. Um, one thing that the code does is that where wherever you get a crossover, it highlights that with a, a green background and where you get across under its highlights with a red background. So you can see, let's just open this up a little bit. You can see where we crossed over here. We bought this contract on the next bar. Turns out that we actually sold this contract on this down bar or after this crossover. We sold it, but the price, the price of that contract was zero at that time. And this is something that um, this is why it's actually good to visualize a strategies because sometimes there's things that you don't think about when you create strategies like um, we need to sell this contract before it expires worthless. For example, this contract we bought um, back here in March, we bought the March contract when this crossover, we didn't get a cross under until after May. And um, so the problem is, is that the, the option expires. Well, it didn't expire worthless, but it's uh, it's zero price after the expir expiration date. So we need to add some code to um, to sell this option if if we're still in the position, even though we didn't get a crossover. So that's uh, something interesting. Um, let's see, what else do we want to go over here? Uh, something, you know, these parameters are, are things that um, that I added to the code also, is that, uh, let's say we get a crossover we, uh, just before the option expiration. We don't necessarily want to buy it um, if it's going to expire tomorrow anyway. So that's why I added this days out. So you might want to say, okay, let's just, uh, I don't want to buy anything in, in, unless the, the option is at least 10 days out. If it's if it's less than 10 days out, we're going to go to the, we're going to buy to the next month. And you can see that changes the strategy quite a bit, which um, which options that we're actually buying. But in any case, we don't want to get in this situation where we buy, it expires, and then we sell it 
later during this crossover when it's already worthless. And that's probably why, we're, and that's definitely why we're getting, we're losing all of our trades here. So I'm going to pause the video, make a little correction in the code and uh, post that. Okay, we're back. Um, I created this small little extra procedure that I added called option X date that takes the option symbol, calculates its X date. Here's, the, here's what a symbol looks like. Finds this X date in the symbol and returns it a, a one day prior to the expir expiry. So what we're going to do is we're going to add that rule to the exit logic. So we're going to say, well, actually what we can do is we can combine it with this rule. So we're going to say that if it crosses under or if the date of the bar, of the current bar, is greater than or equal to option X date of the trading of the symbol that we're trading. Oops, P P is the last position that we're putting here. P symbol. And let's see, that should be it. If the crossover or the date is greater than, then we're going to exit at market. Okay, so we made a change, so we need to compile that. And it says that I have an error because I used an extra term. Okay, we need to add an extra thing up here. Don't worry about this. System globalization. We'll compile it again, and we got successful. Now we're going to run the strategy again. And here we go. So now you can see that we have a crossover here, and we exited on the expiry. Same over here, crossover, exit on the expiry. Okay, and if we look at our trades now, okay, now we're doing a little better. We're actually making some money. Um, another thing, notice that this is a, a daily uh, chart. I do have a five-minute chart for SPY. We can run that. Now, this is, this is going to run it over a year of data, five-minute data. So this is, uh, we're going to get a lot of contracts again. So let's, you can run it over a certain range if you want to, but let's just try it for the last, um, let's call it uh, two months. And we still get a lot of contracts. So it's just so that we can visualize this a little better. Wow, we got a lot of trades even in just the last month. Let's just look and see what happened last week. Here, um, another thing that we can do is we can get rid of all this uh, charting. We don't need necessarily need to see this these these panes uh, if you don't want to. In the, in the code, you can add um, that routine that that uh, plots all the panes is right at the end of the code. So you can say just add a return there with a semicolon, compile it, and if you run it again, you just won't see those panes anymore. But you can see that you can see the trades. And um, okay, I think that's it. I just you know just be aware of what you, the data that you're loading, uh, the size of the contract that you're trading, and the scale. And I hope that helps.